we have evolved through rounds of complexity. So just like ogres have layers and <laughs> Shrek has layers, humans have layers. There's the cognitive layer, which is sort of the outer, you know, most, the, the, the latest evolutionary innovation, this enormous neocortex that we have evolved. And then there's the emotional uh, baggage underneath that. And then there's all of the fear and fright and flight and all of these kinds of behaviors. So AI only has a neocortex. AI doesn't have a limbic system. It doesn't have this complexity of human emotions, which make us so, I think, beautifully complex, so beautifully uh, intertwined with our emotions, with our instincts, with our, you know, sort of gut reactions and all of that. So I think when humans are trying to suppress that aspect, the sort of quote unquote more human aspect towards a more cerebral aspect, I think we lose a lot of the creativity, we lose a lot of the you know, freshness of humans. And I think that's quite irreplaceable. So we can look at the entirety of people that are alive today, maybe all humans who have ever lived yeah. and map them in this high dimensional space. And there's probably a, a center, uh, a center of mass for that mapping. And a lot of us deviate in different directions. So the, the variety of uh, directions in which we all deviate from that center is vast. I would like to think that the center is actually empty. Yes. That basically humans are just so diverse from each other that there's no such thing as an average human. That every one of us has some kind of complex baggage of emotions, intellectual, you know, motivational, uh, behavioral traits that um, it's not just one sort of normal distribution we deviate from it. There's so, so many dimensions that we're kind of hitting the sort of sparseness, the, the curse of dimensionality where it's actually quite sparsely populated. And I don't think you have an average human being. So what makes us unique in part is the diversity and the capacity for diversity. And the capacity of the diversity comes from the entire evolutionary history. So there's just so many ways we can vary from each other. Yeah, I would say not just the capacity, but the inevitability of diversity. Basically, it's in our hardware. We are wired differently from each other. My siblings and I are completely different. My kids from each other are completely different. My, my, my wife has, she's like number two of six siblings. From, from a distance, they look the same, but then you get, to, you, know, you get to know them, every one of them is completely different. But sufficiently the same that the differences interplay with each other. So that's the interesting thing, where the diversity is functional, it's useful. So it's like we're close enough to where we notice the diversity and it doesn't um, completely destroy the possibility of like effective communication and interaction. So it's, we're still the same kind of thing. So what I said in one of our earlier podcasts is that if humans realize that we're 99.9% .9 identical, we would basically stop fighting with each other. <laughs> like we are really one human species and we are so, so similar to each other. And if you look at the alternative, if you look at the next thing outside humans, like it's been 6 million years that we haven't had a relative. So it's, it's truly extraordinary that, that we're, we're kind of like this dot in outer space compared to the rest of life on earth.